If you're planning on visiting China, Beijing is definitely a must-see city for so many reasons. Beijing is full of history, culture, and of course, the Great Wall of China. But even if you only have a few days to visit Beijing, you can still see a lot of it. We were only going for three days, so we wanted to do as much as we possibly could, including on the first day. We started out at Tiananmen Square, which really, there's not much there. It's really just a wide open square, but it is right next to the Forbidden City and Imperial Palace. So you cross the street and really you should spend a majority of the day at the Forbidden City, which is what we did because it's such a broad, large complex. The site is the former Chinese Imperial Palace beginning with the Ming Dynasty and ending with the Qing Dynasty, 1420 to 1912, and I apologize if I pronounced any of that wrong. The Forbidden City sees more than 17 million visitors each year, so along with the sheer size of the complex, expect it to be incredibly crowded, which is something we saw all across China. There are just a lot of people through all of the tourist locations. From there, you can cross the street and go to the Jingshan Park and Lighthouse, which is such a great place to visit. There are a number of stairs to get to the top, so definitely be expecting that. But once you get up there, the views are amazing. When you leave the lighthouse, you'll probably walk down some stairs through a few more buildings. At the bottom, you'll find some food and tables where you can relax for a few minutes, eat some lunch, and then you will be really close to Beihai Park, which is another amazing location in Beijing. One thing we found in Beijing is that it just depends on the air quality for that day. It really has nothing to do with anything. We woke up one day and it had blue sky. We woke up one day and it was completely smoggy. One of the things I was most excited about for China was all of their street markets. You can get amazing food from a bunch of different vendors at most cities in China. I'm a little embarrassed to say that I got a little bit tired of it after a couple days and had to take a couple days off. I even went to McDonald's once, I know, don't judge me, but eventually I got back to it and there's some amazing food in that country. I do not like this. Oh, I love this. This is fantastic. There are three different sections of the Great Wall of China that you can visit from Beijing. Badaling is probably the most popular and that's because it's closest to the city and you can reach it by train. However, it's also the busiest and the most touristy. So we decided to venture out just a little bit further. 
We decided we wanted to visit the Mutianyu section of the Great Wall. It's the second furthest from the city, which does mean fewer people. And we chose this section because it has a toboggan to get down from the wall. We chose a tour from Get Your Guide and it ended up being the best choice we could have made. A bus picked us up at our hotel in the morning or you can have a location where you meet the bus as well. It took about an hour and a half to get to the Great Wall from our hotel. This gave our guide time to explain everything to us, including the different routes we could take once on the wall, depending on our fitness level and the amount of time each one would take us. Once you get up there, you can take a cable car to get to the top. You can also hike, although I will tell you if you're hiking the Great Wall, you want to save some time and take the cable car. I have a story on this and exactly which direction you want to go and how long each one will take. Just click on the link below. We decided to take the route to the right, towers 14 through 20. This would give us some more hiking time. However, it was the opposite direction of the toboggan, so we did not get to do that on this trip, which is totally fine. Once we got to 20, I decided I was done because there was a lot of stairs. However, my boy friend decided to keep going so you can see some of the photos from the further sections of the wall. Once we got to the top actually section 20 had beer up there and some snacks and other things like that so I just hung out there for a while. When we got down we actually had lunch with our tour group at a restaurant that we had reservations at already and they uh, chose some family style meals for us which was such a great experience. We ended our day at Beijing Olympic Park. The Olympics were actually in Beijing in 2008. They're also going to be there next year as well. There is a huge complex that you can walk around and it really is very popular still. We were walking around and there was probably hundreds of thousands of people out there. They were doing all different kinds of things at night. You can visit the Beijing National Stadium, also known as the Bird's Nest, the Beijing National Aquatic Center or the Water Cube and the Beijing Olympic Tower among other things. Day three in Beijing for us was not quite a full day because we were leaving that day on a train. However, it will be your catch-up day in Beijing. This will be the day you'll do anything you did not get to do the first two days. You'll want to start your day at the Summer Palace for a few reasons. The first is that the Summer Palace tends to get incredibly crowded and you'll want to be there before the majority of crowds get there. The complex is huge and you just never know how long it will take you to explore, which is another reason to start your day there. The Summer Palace tends to be a lot cooler than the rest of the city. Actually, the past Chinese emperors used it as their summer retreat to stay cool during the summer. You're going to want to plan for a minimum of a few hours to wander through their summer palace. The property encompasses many acres and houses dozens or maybe even hundreds of buildings. You'll be able to see living quarters, boat houses, a giant lake, modern gift shops and restaurants as well. Three days was probably too short to spend in Beijing, but for us, it was a part of a two week trip to four different cities in China, so we didn't want to spend too much time in one place. It is a beautiful city with beautiful history and is very worth visiting. At the end of our day, we took an overnight train from Beijing to Jean, and so we sat here at the train station. You can see it pass by. 